Okay, it seems to start okay. Hi, Tech Rabbit here. Well, um, Friday evening. Yeah, been a long week. Got some winter here. Minus two Celsius. Don't ask me what that is in farm. I don't know. Farm hunt. Um Yeah. I um did a bit of work with this um real-time clock module and that, that turned out to be a very easy thing to um, get working so <coughs> so basically I have this DS1307 module and um, you can find instructions how to connect this up all over the internet basically um, but here's the basic pinout and then if you're going to use a mega then you need to use these these pins it's for the uh, i square 2 um, bus and um, I think if I switch the view mm, what am I doing? sorry oh, I wanted to change oh. yeah. so then you need to because I'll show it in this one so you need to, this is the mega that I'm using so then you need to connect it to those two pins that are there so that's the pin 20 and 21 and they're very very well marked on the board so if we go to um, to here and then you see here's the RTC module which I actually demonstrated when I was doing the overview of the sensors that are extra sensors and then it has this coin cell battery on the other side to keep the time even if you shut the power off and they're very well marked so they and, and basically you only need to put in um, one pin, pin header on one side of the board so you don't need to populate this other side I actually don't know why this other side exists I haven't looked in it's maybe to daisy chain the S SP2 uh, no, I2C bus so that you can come to this device and then continue to the next because they're basically you can add you know, on the uh, I2C bus you address modules so they, it's a single basically a single wire um, bus where you can chain modules um, that would be in parallel and then it listens to, you know, when you communicate you say okay what address do you want to have? Do you want to access. So you just have the power, so I have it coming in here from the side, and then these two signal cables go into the appropriate connector in the um, mega cord. And um, this is uh, also it very easy. Now, now I think the more mo uh, would be important. Yeah, so I had to solder the header on and connect it with cable, or you can just um, solder wires to it. In many ways, you can connect it up. Uh, but I think the most interesting thing um, uh, is actually. Oh, I wonder if I should show. How I should show. Yeah, let's look at the. Um, Got the base example here. So this is the basic code, a standalone code version. And as I said, you can find many. But, but the the good thing with this this code is that this is um, pure. It, it, you don't, as you see, it, it 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 actually doesn't load in any time library or anything. Now, when you go and look in the Arduino library, there are many, many libraries for time handling, uh, to provide a time handling interface, plus the um, ability to use either a software clock or, um, optionally, the hardware module. But, and, and, um, but I think this code is great, because this, uh, this is, uh, uh, for, for my basics, it's good enough. Um, because this needs no basically no library, it just um, uses raw communication on the I2C bus, 
and it's not that complicated cold so uh, highlights are you can set the time so it has a subroutine to uh, set the time directly by sending data on the on the bus to the module yeah oh yeah that's a good point you 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 define what address the module has here and then it uses this uh, i2 uh, C bus, uh, which is actually um, this one here. So that you do need to include. Uh, yeah. So it's very it, and and the nice thing about this code, it's very self-explanatory. I mean, it, it you know it shows exactly what it's doing. So actually, um, I just loaded up the script with this set time enabled, and then when the the trick I used is that when the specific time came, then I pressed reset on the mega, and then it would run the setup routine. So I got a to the second of the correct time uh, um, communicated to the RTC module. And since it's got a power backup in form of a battery, it won't forget that time. Um, and then it has a read function to read the time through the I2C bus. And here's an example where it's like printing to the serial terminal. So I thought that was cool. So what I thought is I um, would integrate it directly into the experiment logic to my experiment box. So there. So as you see, I just added the um, the wire uh, module added the address definition for the RTC module and then it was just to go oh then I added the two utility functions that basically convert um, decimal to BCD or BCD to decimal very self-explanatory actually uh, and then, um, then in setup I just said okay wire begin Initializes the the wire interface, and then I I put up this as a placeholder. So if I ever need to reset the time, then I can actually do it on the on the megals. And then nothing more needed in setup. And then in the loop, I made no changes. And then. And then, the, like in the previous videos, I went over how I set up this, how I have set up this experiment box with its, um, where it um, periodically um, samples the temperatures and send, sends sends measurement data. Or actually, this does uh, three things: it sends the measurement data over the serial USB emulated emulation, it stores the values in the SD card, and then it's also sending the values over. Uh, over the Ethernet network with UDP. So basically, I just added in the sections to. So if you look at the most simplest implementation, then um, it's basically here. So it's okay, I go get the time. And it's also nicely self explanatory. So it basically reads, you know, gets all these values for you. And they're defined up here as byte values. And then you just, um, yeah, then I just used. Um, decimal formatting to print them out to the serial interface and then when it's done that then it puts them into the SD card using the same print logic and then finally it sends them over UDB on the Ethernet network and then there was only one trick here is just that you need to format the uh, let's see the output needs to be formatted as um, decimal so then it takes the byte value and uh, prints it out onto the UDB network correctly. Uh, I haven't actually tested that, so I better st wonder if I could actually start my program here. Let's see if I can find it.
<laughs> I just did it two days ago. Now I've for, forgotten where I put it. Oh, that's strange. Oh, I wonder where would I have put it then? This is a bit embarrassing. Oh, ah, we'll forget that. That's probably nothing we need to look at here. Um, if somebody's interested, I can <laughs> I can dig it, dig it up. No, I just can't remember where I put it. I was going to load up the Python um, code that was reading the UDP traffic. Um, but I um, misled. I don't know where I put that file. I'll have to find it after the video. Uh, that was that simple, actually. Yeah, I can I can say this was a good module. It um, took very little time to and to connect it and understand it and get it working. So I, I could actually recommend this. Now it looks like the traffic is stable. I've been running it a lot and um, it seems to work yeah, really nicely. And um, yeah, the nice thing there, now you get a real-time real, real -time clock, so now I can timestamp um, the um, measurement data with a real date and time and not just have a millisecond value. I've kept the millisecond timestamp also. Now I can actually put, have the RTC data there. So, uh, and and very good to have it backed up with a, um, you know, with the um, clock. I think that's actually a nice touch. Okay, so uh, that was that. Um, let's see if I. to here. I'm sorry, it bothers me that I've lost that. <laughs> oh my god, I, where, did, where would I have put it? I'm just looking here, but, because this is annoying. It should be there. Heat transfer experiment. Is it here? Let's see, I'll just check that. Looking in the wrong place. Yes. No, I can actually show it, I think. Right. Let's see if this runs. I haven't actually I haven't tested this, so this is on the fly. Test and let's see if any data comes over. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, there it came. So now you see, now we got the, um, I just added a section where it, uh, you have the values, like the timestamp milliseconds is still there, and then you have hour, minute, second, day. Let's see if uh, the actual, oops, I was just going to check that there are actual values in here. Yeah, 15, 15, 12, the year is 18, I could add 1, 9, or 2018. The real time clock doesn't show uh, millennium years. It's just a like 18 for 2018. Not that I think it matters much. But anyway, it was nice to show the, uh, the UDB also works. So now I could, in theory, I could store the um, timestamp in the in the um, client Python code that uh, updates the database. I don't know if I'll do that. Would be rather easy to do. Ah, we'll see. Well, that's pretty accurate. I mean, uh, you know, I demonstrated in one of my previous videos. I demonstrated how to add the uh, dynamically allocate the um, the database fields. Um, so I, it would just be to add, ex expand that definition, you know, and then delete the database, and then it would automatically recreate the database with the table structure with these fields added. So it's more up to my you know how how much energy I have if I go and add them. 
No, but I can I can write it really cheap also. Um, hardly cost anything. So, uh, there seems to be a little bit of different types of chips on on sale, but I I don't know if that if it's um, if there would be such a meaningful difference than we had with the SD card reader where it doesn't have the voltage leveling circuit. I don't think this this problem that problem doesn't exist with this this module, independent of what specific module type you buy. And I don't really think that the clock circuit really has much. There are a few different clock circuits also, chips on the market, but I don't think it um, really matters um, which one one buys. But I say, real easy to add uh, and use. And as you saw, I spent most of my time just um, adding the uh, enhancing the software uh, for not really work. Uh, I didn't have to debug anything on, on using this chip, which was quite enlightening. Usually, one has at least one or two small problems to sort out. Okay, well that's for the um, uh, Friday evening update. So, if the audio seems to have worked, then I'll upload the video. So, that's all from the the tech rabbit for now.